edition of Sun TV. I'm Clint Franks, and with me, as always, is the managing editor and publisher of The Sun Advocate, Deanne Campbell. Hello, Deanne. Hello, Clint. How are you today? Doing fine. We've got a great show today. We do. We have a couple of special guests coming on here shortly. Uh, we're going to be talking about uh, an exciting grant uh, that the county just earned for a much-needed road project in the county. We'll have probate judge Michael Armstead and county engineer Jason Sturdivant with us here shortly. Uh, but first, we're going to go over... Uh, a few things that are uh, going on in the news today. We've got a full slate of stories this week, Clint, in the paper coming up. We've got some more announcements for political candidates. Uh, we've got a look at local education news and a report on how the state stacks up when it comes to um, anti-smoking efforts, and that's a pretty interesting story. Um, also, we will take a look at um, Choctaw County native Kevin McKenzie's got a new book out, a leadership book, a very interesting new book. Uh, I think uh, you wouldn't want to miss reading that if you're involved in anything like it. If you're an employer or any any leadership role, um, it, it's a it's a it's a, it's a great book to to kind of jumpstart you in some areas that you might not have thought about before. Uh, the town of Butler is gearing up for Mardi Gras. Countywide parade coming up uh, this Saturday uh, at six o'clock. That's February third, six p.m. They've got a block party starting at about four. Some activities going on before the parade. And um, last year I think they had a pretty good turnout. I mean, yeah. This is the third year that we've done Mardi Gras parade. It's a countywide event, and um, it's a lot of fun. If you want to catch a few moon pies and some beads, go to Butler. This that sounds good. Yeah. Uh, we've got um, that, uh, Martin Luther King close out right. meeting meeting coming up on the January 30th. Uh, that's Tuesday at Trinity Church at 530. We also have the Cattlemen's Association annual meeting of the uh, Cattlemen and Cattle Women's Association. That's always a lot of fun. A uh, big steak to eat. Uh, that's coming up February the 17th, 6.30 p.m. at Heritage Church here in Gibbertown. And you have to RSVP if you're going by February 10th, and you can call Cheryl Laster at 251-542-9413 for information on attending that banquet. That's always a whole lot of fun, and this year will probably be even more fun because it's a political year, and I'm sure we'll have some, some speeches from some candidates who are going to attend that meeting. Uh, well, what about the weather, Clint? Uh, well, let's see here. Well, it rained this weekend a lot. Yeah, um, but it was nice. Not bad. It got on out of here. Today is a, ni a nice sunny day. Uh, looks like the sun's going to shine with no clouds, at least through Wednesday with temperatures in the 60s and highs in the 30s and 40s. Yeah. Not too bad considering what we have had. We'll take it. Yeah. We will see some clouds picking in on yeah. Thursday and Friday. Uh, chance of rain on Sunday. And uh, we'll take that news because we've been through a little bit of snow and ice. We have heard a little hint that there might be some more coming. Not sure if that's still in the, in the plans for the area. But I know North Alabama's supposed to see a little snow. I've seen all the snow I want to see. Local obituaries. Uh, we've got some, uh, a few obituaries uh, to tell you about um, some uh, local funeral services. William Bill Sumrall, who is a former resident of the county, uh, he passed away on Friday, January 26th, and he will be buried at Ray Funeral Home. Well, he'll, the services will be at Ray Funeral Home in Indianola, Mississippi, tomorrow, January 30th, 2.30 p.m., and burial at Delta Heights Memorial Gardens. And services for Freddie Logan Sr. of Gibbertown will be held today at 3 o'clock, and that'll be at Bumpers, uh, and burial, burial will follow at Walnut Hill Cemetery. There were great side services for Buddy Dunn of Gilbertown, and they were held Saturday the 27th at Finley Crossing Cemetery. Those are some of the obituaries that you'll find in the paper this week. Sports, what's in going the, on? In the sports, basketball is the, is the headline. Basketball is the word. Um, this week is... State tournament time over at the uh, multiplex at Crampton Bowl and Choctaw County is very well represented in that. The Patrician Academy girls, they uh, took the region tournament. Uh, they'll play, they took the region two tournament. They'll play um, Tuesday at three o'clock. Uh, PA boys, they, they they finished the tournament as the number three seed. They'll play Tuesday evening at 7.30. And then on Wednesday, South Choctaw's girls uh, really really have surprised a lot of folks. They go into the uh, state tournament undefeated. They'll play Wednesday in Montgomery at 3 o'clock, and SCA, SCA's boys, they will they took the number two seed. They'll play Wednesday at 1.30. So. so we'll have coverage of that coming yes. up, and we're going to uh, hopefully do some Sun TV live broadcast as we get closer into the state tournament so that we can bring some of that to y'all who can't go to those games. Um, last year we were able to do that, had a good viewership for those games, and hopefully we'll be able to bring you some Sun TV live coverage of basketball. And they look, I mean, they look poised to, to bring some hardware home. Right. All right, Clint, 
Um, in a few minutes, we're going to have, we're going to break for just a second and we're going to have our guests come on and uh, we'll see you right back. Today we have with us two guests on our show, uh, probate judge Michael Armstead and county engineer Jason Sturdivant. They're going to be talking to us about a project that's coming up, thankfully, uh, from a grant uh, funding that the county received last week. And I'm going to let uh, Judge Armstead talk a little bit about the grant process and tell us what's going on with this. Well, the grant we received was through a deck of the Alabama Department of uh, Economic and Community Affairs, and the maximum amount that you could get is $350,000. We applied for it last year through a grant writer that we have under contract, and uh, we were lucky. Uh, usually those type of grants where they go for community uh, improvements, and the majority of the time that we apply for these is for water, sewer, something to that effect. Usually they don't fund road grants, but we were very fortunate this time out of uh, $6 million that they were given out to the entire state, 67 counties municipalities, communities could apply for, so it's highly competitive. We were funded for the full amount of $350,000. Now, we applied, and the basis of this application was for the Brightwater Road, for that uh, improvement. Brightwater Road, as you know, has been long believed or uh, as one of the worst roads in Choctaw right. County. Now, Anybody that's driven down that road probably uh, uh, it's, agrees with that. It's awful. I mean, and, and don't get me wrong, I know there are other people out there that say their road is bad, and hey, there are plenty of bad roads in Choctaw County. We'll be the first to admit it. We ride on, we work on uh, Mr. Servant. I mean, he's out there all the time. So we understand uh, road situations are, people get very passionate about that, and they should. Um, but this is uh, an opportunity for us to take care of one of those bad situations. Well, uh, there was some work done on uh, entryway for Brightwater um, where it meets over there around New Hope area um, last year, I believe it was? Yes, ma'am. Last summer we uh, we did approximately seven, eight tenths of a mile um, on the very south end. Um, of course, that will be included in this project, but we'll start there and go north all the way to Canada 20. Okay, that's what I was going to ask. Uh, $350,000, that sounds like a whole lot of money, but when you're doing road projects, it's really not... Um, uh, it's not as much as what you might need to do the whole road, right? Right. We, we're probably going to have to put a little bit with it. Yeah. And, of course, we're going to do all the work with uh, our, our forces, which will help. Because uh, we're able to, we we got we got our men that's capable to do that type of work and have the equipment, too. So, which which makes the cost a lot less. So, we can take the money a little bit further than we normally would if we had to contract it out. Well, um, also, uh, I think... Uh, it might be a good idea to talk a little bit to the viewers about how um, the county's funding is in regard to road projects, where the funding comes from, because I think they get sometimes a little bit um, confused or they don't understand um, how some roads get paved or resurfaced and how others do not. Well, so, I'm going to hit it on a, on a general, and I'll let Mr. Sturpin go in in more, more detail. The roads are classified the majority of the time as uh, major collectors, minor collectors, then you have your state highways also. Um, the state highways are the ones that are maintained by the state, that the state assumes maintenance over. Major collectors, we can receive federal funding to go along with some state funding and some local funding to put money on those would be something like, let's just say, the, uh, the, the Berrytown Road is a major collector. Uh, County Road 9 is a major collector, uh, and so some of those, Pleasant Hill Road is a major collector. Uh, some of the ones that are, are would be considered as uh, minor collectors, uh, you can't put federal funds on those unless, is it something like all of your major collectors are um, taken care of and up to a certain standard before right. you can do that? That's right, that's right. And also, we, you have what we consider local roads that doesn't meet your classification for a major collector or a minor collector. So, uh, and of course, as Judge Armstrong said, uh, uh, major collectors are can be funded with federal aid funds. Uh, some minor collectors can be, but local roads such as Brightwater Road uh, is not eligible for federal aid funds. So that was one of the things that we looked at when we applied for this grant. Is this grant would would help us with Brightwater Road, whereas federal aid funds would. So what's the time frame on the project with Brightwater Road? Uh, I hope that we can hope that we can get started on it early spring. That's good. You've got to wait for the weather to um, to clear up a little bit. You know, with the rain and the cold, um, for the um, 
asphalt to, to actually stick. You got to be above a certain temperature for, for it just to work. Uh, otherwise, you're going to put down, it's going to slide, you're going to have problems, it's just not going to work. So, so doing this, and like, like we were saying, this $350,000 going to Brightwater Road, we wouldn't have been able to fund it otherwise. Um, because that's 100% money that would come out. And what we try to do is we try to leverage the funding that we get by using it to go along with funding that we could receive from the state or the federal government. Um, now, the classification on some of these roads, some of these roads we applied for for them to be reclassified, like the, the New Hope Road going to all the way. change whether or not it was classified as a major or minor collector. Yes, and it's a, it's a process that we have to go through and uh, Mr. Dirk can go over the, the details, but we're able to get the New Hope Road all the way through to the Needham Road uh, reclassified. Right. Uh, traffic counts, um, having to do with what they connect, whether they go through municipality, things like that. Um, and so we've been able to resurface uh, the Needham Road all the way down to the uh, three-way stop, and then New Hope Road all the way down to Bonnertown Road, I believe. So we've got a section in the middle that we're going to get to also, but. The only way we're able to do that is because we've got those reclassified. And getting reclassified, then I think it's a 20% match instead of us paying the full 100%. Well, we've seen an, uh, in the last several years, we've seen several projects take place that have been a long time coming. Um, and I don't think there's anybody out there that would argue with the fact that things are much better than they were just a handful of years ago in regard to roads. There are still people out there who want to see some other projects done. And so uh, maybe we could talk a little bit about um, what we might see in the future, what we're trying to plan. Well, of course, when you when you get a project completed, that just moves your other roads up on the list so that you can get them completed if you get any additional funding. Um, and, of course, we're going to continue to uh, utilize federal aid funds as we can to resurface uh, the roads that are classified as major collectors. Um, such as the rest of New Hope Road to connect up at Needham, from Needham to Bonnertown Road, uh, Ayrett Road, there's County Road 3 down to Aquila. There are several roads that are eligible for federal aid funds. There we're going uh, to utilize federal aid funds to get them done, you know, and it depends on how soon we can, how much money we can get in the future. Uh, we're limited on the amount of federal aid funds we can apply for, but we do ask for extra money from time to time. Uh, and also, from, from year to year, you can apply for this type of project that we're doing on Brightwater Road, and, and you can also apply for road work, you know. So at some point next year, um, before, just like this year, we will apply for some project, whether that be a water line or a road project. And of course, mm -hmm. I'll have some input in that to the county commission, with the county commission to make that decision. So it's possible that we'll get another road next year on this same type of program. That's good news. Uh, do we see anything moving about anything uh, similar to a trip to bill that might come back up in the legislature? Well, that, there has been some talk, uh, uh, possibly about a program, uh, statewide program similar to a trip. Um, that would yeah. the program that, that I've seen that this this kind of been advertised through our association is talking about uh, resurfacing some of the roads that <coughs> hadn't been eligible for federal aid funds. So that would help. With some of the some of the other roads that we have limited funding on, getting them resurfaced also. Just for um, informational purposes, last year we uh, had seen the legislature haggle back and forth over a trip two, which would have placed a small gas tax on with the money earmarked for county road and bridge projects, and the county stand stood to get about ten million or more, That's right. and um, that didn't happen as far as the legislature didn't follow through with the vote on that. Right, and the, the money that we could have got for a trip two if it goes through is we could leverage that money by using it to um, be matching money, leverage it up to, I think Mr. Sturman had told the commission, roughly $18 million. Right, so we could have, it tr could translate to almost double of what That's we right. received right. from the gas well, tax. you know, in the, past, in the past five years, we spent approximately $15 million on road and bridge improvements, and, you know, of course, that's not enough. I mean, we've got, what are our total miles? We've got around 400 miles of paved roads. 400 miles, and how much does it cost us if we did it ourselves? If we did it ourselves, you know, it, we can do a fairly good job for around $70,000, $80,000 a mile. A mile. So you do the math there, and it tells you where we need to be money-wise to get all the roads. 
But what we're trying to do now is with the $15 million that we've already spent, and those are some of the what we call the major collectors that we talked about, most everybody is able to utilize those roads. And all of those roads needed, those are the most highly traveled roads um, in the county. But with ATRIP 2, the thing is we could use that money on roads like the Brightwater Road, the Branch Road, um, County Road 1 up in uh, uh, in the Yantley area, there are a lot of roads that we can use that money on that we would not be able to get funding for them otherwise. So through the Alabama County Commission Association, we're going through and we're lobbying the legislature to try to get us to, or try to allow them to put through a trip too. And then we can bring some money back to Choctaw County in the tune of 10 to $18 million. And that's what we're trying to do. We're always looking for funding opportunities. We are more than uh, knowledgeable about the, the problems and the roads that we have, especially this time of year. You know, we've got a lot of right. a lot of water. People live on dirt winter, roads. Oh, yeah. Weather conditions that we've had. Too, I sure. mean, and, and we sympathize with. Them. I mean, there's there's no doubt. We ride the roads, and there's not anybody on the county commission who does not want to improve the road conditions in Choctaw County. And uh, with what we've done, we've laid groundwork on this, and we have things that are working for the future. And that's what we're working toward. We're working toward trying to hit everybody's road that we can take care of. Uh, funding is an issue. Uh, funding is an issue for every county in, China, excuse me, in the state of Alabama. But for a small that's county, true. we're getting our fair share, and we're trying to put it back onto the roads for the people of Choctaw County. Uh, well, is there anything that you want to add, uh, Mr. Sturdivant, regarding the project that's coming up with Brightwater? I just look forward to it. I mean, it's been a project that's been needed for years, and uh, I'm very excited about it. Very excited for the people to have that good road, you know. I, uh, and uh, so, I, like I said, I'm just excited about, about being able to do it and help the people in that community. Okay. Uh, what do we have coming up, Judge, uh, in, uh, putting aside road and bridges for just a minute? Um, what do we have coming up, um, issue-wise, in the, maybe the county commission will be um, discussing? Anything um, current going on with the county? Well, one course? of the biggest things that we've got going on right now is... Uh, and I think people are, are taking sides on this. Uh, I guess you would consider it to be the, um, a very uh, tumultuous or very uh, people choosing sides. You know, it's one of those things that is the abatement request from Georgia Pacific. Um, the good thing is, you know, if you're, if you're looking at us trying to help the industry, the good thing is Georgia Pacific's wanting to invest into their meal. There was a time there that there was concern as to whether or not Georgia Pacific would be around, but now they're looking at putting in almost a half a billion dollars of improvements into um, their facility at uh, Nahiola. Mm -hmm. So what we have to do as a county commission is we have to determine if they're going to grow, how do we grow with them, meaning that their tax contribution to the county based on what they do is how can the county benefit over and above the fact that there would be jobs provided there and the job and the provided, stability is a, is a important thing for this county right but it's, how can the county benefit from that as tax exactly tax i mean we can't give up all of our tax income for them to improve so what we have to do is we have to find the happy place i guess you say where uh we can ensure that georgia pacific can have long-term viability of their uh, facility here in choctaw county and allow the county to grow in proportion with that. So right now, that's probably the biggest thing that's on the um, on the burner for the county commission. Um, but that's that's the one that we're all taking the most interest in because we want to make sure that we help Georgia Pacific, but we also the county doesn't suffer from doing that. Right. Uh, we've all heard the scare uh, scary stories about. Sure. Uh, GP leaving or right. any industry that, in any county that provides that many jobs and is that important, right. I think um, uh, people get a little bit upset whenever you uh, start talking about that because they feel like we're going to lose a lot of jobs. And, well, another so. thing that we've done, um, and I know you know and you've reported on this, is we've hired a uh, chief industrial development officer. Right. So we're taking a, a proactive stance in going off not only trying to take care of the businesses that are here, but to have somebody on staff who's out recruit recruiting, us. you know, and, uh, you know, I try to do that, but with my job as probate judge and chairman, uh, it doesn't allow me to do that on a full-time basis. So having somebody, Mr. Nick Carroll, I know you're familiar with Nick, he was uh, uh, the man of the year or right. something. Citizen of the year, Citizen actually. of the year. 
So Nick's very well accomplished in that. He does a great job with the chamber, and the good thing is we're able to utilize his skills with the chamber along with the industrial development, uh, chief industrial development officer, so I think he'll be a great fit. Yeah. Great. I appreciate y'all coming today, and uh, maybe we can have y'all back on later as we get closer to the project or any other projects y'all want to come talk about. We're always uh, glad to have y'all. Thank you for watching today. We'll see you on Wednesday. Thank you.